Praise God. I pray that you're all having a blessed Sunday afternoon, evening, wherever you are in all of the world. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be with you in the name of Jesus. So this is part two to ask God to reveal the areas that need to be healed. You know, you can always tell when you're actually still upset with someone or you don't like someone, because here's the deal. And I'm going to touch on, on these characteristics. Let's say someone walks into a room that you've had beef with or you don't like or whatever. And your whole face starts, you know how you start. And then the person, if people notice it. So let's say somebody's sitting by you. They say, what's wrong? You'd be like, nothing. Ain't nothing wrong. You talk, start talking real fast, right? You haven't been healed from that person's actions, even their presence. Sometimes our emotions, because of what people have said in the past, it could be family, it could be friends, it could be whomever the case may be. All these things actually can be a conduit to stop you from healing and for, from God delivering you. Because it is not just about the other person's actions. It is about, do you really want to behold? I, I'm reminded when the man was by the pool, God said, do you want to behold? Do you want to be healed? Because we can sit up there, all of us have had some things happen to us, good, bad, or indifferent. But it is a choice to forgive. It is a choice to be healed. It is a choice to be delivered, believe it or not. Because truth be told, some people love that woe is me mentality. Some people love playing the victim because it has gotten them attention. It has gotten them favor with the people that they know. But truth be told, a person that is whole, healed, and delivered, they don't want to hear that all the time. When they call you, they don't always want to hear um, what was going on. As a matter of fact, let me tell you how you know you didn't messed up. What's wrong now? <laughs> Come on, somebody. And I've done it to people too because you know every time they call you, it's something. So it's like, what's wrong now? Right then and there, if you hear that, you, you, you should also, a red flag should come up, hey, something's going on. So we want to focus with healing. We want to focus on healing because that's what's happening in today's society and especially in the church. That's why you have road rage, anger, murders, killings, um, revenge, all hate, because you won't let go of what they did. I'm going to walk this thing like I talk it. Hold on. Let me, let me get, because I'm kind of short. I'm five through y'all. I got to, let me tell y'all something. And, and I'm going to start with transparency. There are some people, whether it's family, friends, or whatever, I make it my business not to hold on to anything. I'm going to remember for mental note, check that out. But if you think I'm going to have anger, rage, unforgiveness, that stuff is like a disease, people. And the reason I'm doing these series, this is part two. I did one Friday because God wants us to heal. We're sitting up there saying, God, use us. God, use us. How can God use you when you have stuff? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk this thing out. When you have stuff, somebody be a scribe for me. When you have unforgiveness, when you have hate, when you always thinking negative, let me tell y'all something because I, I'm going to free some of you today. Well, may, may I say the Holy Ghost will. You wonder why some people don't want to be around some people. People don't want to be around people that drain them. Always negative, always talking down, always talking about people. We got to stop that, especially as a church. You know, we, we sit in church. You heard this. I heard it. You saw that. You saw it. Stop playing. Time off for all that from the old to the young. It is time for everybody to forgive and live. And I'm not just saying it that way. I'm telling you what God say. Thus said God, thus said the Lord. In order to go to the next level of your life, in order to be healed, in order to be delivered, in order to have the presence of God the way you need it so that you can lay hands on somebody, even yourself. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So you can carry the presence of God. You got to make sure that you are clear to hear God says. God says it's too much foolishness in the body of Christ. Let me ask you something. When you're trying to do something and, and it's a lot of foolishness start, don't you know that foolishness stops you from going to the next level? Foolishness deters you looking here and looking there. 
where you can't focus on what God have called you to do or what God wants you to do. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm preaching up in here. Matter of fact, I'm teaching today. Ain't no preaching going on. I am teaching you something. So how do I do this? We're talking about self-deliverance. Write down everything. God says, examine thyself. It is time for you to make a, a note. Okay, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Who do I feel that have hurt me? Who do I feel that I've hurt? If we don't deal with the inside, how can we minister from the outside? Come on, somebody, be a scribe for me today. God will make you look at you, just like I said with last, on my last video. God will make you look at you because God wants you to grow and to know the areas. I know the areas that I'm weak in, so I'm probably not going to touch that. I'm probably not going to go certain places and do certain things. But my strengths, I'm going to keep on working on that as well. And also my weaknesses. God, make me strong where I am weak, Father God, in the name of Jesus. But it's time for us to be real. No more fake it till we make it. But let's be really healed. Let's be really delivered. Learn to love one another. Take that hate out your heart. You know, the, and, and I'm watching my words very carefully because people get offended. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna walk this thing like I talk it. Let's say I have a problem with somebody. You know, they'll go through this video and, and, and we have all done it. I'm gonna call us all out, we've all done it. I wonder if they're talking about me. Don't wonder, I'm talking about you. <laughs> You didn't hear what I just, I'm talking about you. It's time for us to stop with the foolishness, God says. I check myself on it too. Anything that happens, I always check me first. Okay, what part did I play in it? What does God want us to do? How can we as a church grow, unified, be mature in the spirit, carrying the presence of God if we act in silly? If we're acting foolish, if we have all against our brother, if we are all against our sister, if we're always gossiping, if we're always backbiting, if we're always talking about each other. And, and someone may say, well, what does that have to do everything? Because if you're not healed and delivered for real, you can't tell nobody nothing because trust me, your actions speak louder than your words because people will see. Let me tell you something. People listen to you, but at the same time, they're looking at what you do, the kind of life you live. And that's why some people are even not growing spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. There it is right there. I'm, I'm getting ready to hit on that emotional side. It's not just about women these days. Men, I hear men gossiping more ever. I'm like, oh, there's a shift. Because back 20, 30 years, you didn't catch men gossiping like that. They were too busy making money. So now you got gossiping, you got people being hurt and being offended, moving in their emotions. And God say, I want to heal that spot. I want to heal that soft spot. Let me tell you the clues. If you see, if you find yourself getting mad every time somebody tells you something, I get mad so fast, you are not mature. If you gossiping just like that and don't even know the story, you're not mature. If you spread and gossip, you're not mature. Hallelujah. I'm about to, I'm about to hit y'all for real. You shouldn't have any position in the church if you are immature because you'll hurt somebody. I'm going to say it again. You'll hurt somebody because as soon as you get offended, you'll use your position. You'll use your leadership position. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's some real stuff up in here tonight, right? Hallelujah. It's real. Another point. A lot of leaders, most of the time, they will choose people that they are friends with in positions that they can control. Y'all ain't ready for me today. It's time for us to choose people that are spirit filled. Oh, I'm hitting it all today. Ask God the areas that need to be revealed. Well, we're not just talking about a person or in a person's life. We're talking about in the church period, because that's what God look at us as the children of Israel. He don't look at us as sister this or no, we are the children of Israel. And one thing about it in the book of Joshua, it says, pass by your brother in arm. But if your brothers don't have rest, you shouldn't have rest either. What does that scripture truly are saying? It's saying that if my brother is down the street, homeless, don't have anything to eat, I should make sure he does. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me today. Y'all ain't ready for me because we have gotten to the point where this is the real, this is the church that we now fake it till we make it. I'm worried about myself. Oh, as long as I'm good, me, myself, and I. We have to start loving each other again. We have to start worrying about each other again, making sure that person is good. God says, and the commandment I leave unto you to love one another. 
And I keep talking, y'all, y'all notice I've said that about five or six times. Because to, truth be told, it's like we don't love each other anymore in the church. And, and I, I'm, I'm hitting this because this is what I hear the Spirit saying. There's so much hate and rage and anger out there. And somehow it then seeped into the church. We see each other fighting each other. Come on, somebody on, on social media, on YouTube. Saints fighting saints. And the devil just laughing, sitting back laughing. He want us to fight each other. Because if we ever get it together, come on, somebody. If we ever start peeling that onion back and, and just what I'm doing, dealing with each and every situation, but by the word of God and the scripture of God and the presence of God, not with our opinions, not with flesh, because that's a mess. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So in order for God to truly send his spirit in the churches and we see healing and a great deliverance and repentance, we first got to examine ourselves, God says. So I challenge you, write down your strengths and weaknesses. Write down the people that you probably need to make an apology to. And here's the deal. If a person don't accept your apology, that's between them and God. Leave it alone. You can't make people like you. You can't make people love you. You didn't hear what I just said. Stay away from foolishness. Stay away from gossip. I don't want to hear it. Me And I'll tell people, is, is, is this really becoming of us? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm preaching up in here and teaching. So in order for us to be healed, we have to ask God, God, reveal what you want me to change in my life. There it is right there. All of us, we're supposed to be growing to that level of maturity. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You can't stay a babe in Christ forever. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Some of you just want to sit on the pew and, and talk. and No, 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 no. You have an assignment. What is your assignment, God says? But you're too busy looking to the right and to the left instead of focusing and ask God, what is my calling? What is my mandate? What is my assignment? And there are some times where you, you're going to get hit. You're going to get hit hard to where you don't want to continue to do the work of the Lord because it is not easy. Truth be told, it is not easy to do your calling and mandate. But God say, I'll be with you Lord, always to death. I'll give you the power that's needed, but you have to do your part. What is your part? Reading the word every day, not just when you feel like it. This is a every day. This is consistency. Every day, every day, getting, getting on your knees. The first thing I do, and I'm not trying to act like I'm all this or that. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning, I drop to my knees. God, thank you for waking me up. God, thank you for keeping me. And then I say my prayer. God, protect my family. Protect me. Keep me, God. And I pray over my head. I take my oral and I pray over my head. Father God, help me mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. Keep me mentally strong. Don't let me break, God. I know the enemy is after my body, my mind, my soul. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because if he can get one of those, then he's got it all. He's after our confidence. If you don't believe in yourself, believe in God, you can't do what God has called you to do. Because I promise you there's an assignment against you. Come on, somebody. Because when you really carry the power of God, the presence of God, the anointing of God, there's a demonic assignment against you to shut you up, to stop you, to drain you. That's what you have to do, a spiritual check. Somebody be a scribe for me. What is a spiritual check? I check everybody that's around me. And I got them in categories. Drainer, supporter, <coughs> excuse me, anointed, stay away from. Give me some something to drink. All of a sudden, <coughs> like something, I don't know, all of a sudden I want. So you have to do that. And, and, and it's just like another thing that the enemy is doing. Oh, I see what that fool has been doing for years. If it's not incitement and if it's not fast and it's not mess and stuff like that, you can barely get people on here. If it was so, I was talking about somebody, I was, y'all know what I'm saying. They're getting it to where everything has to be excitement. God actually is doing a reversal. God wants us to be taught. We've heard so much preaching, some good preaching, don't get me wrong. But this is also the hour of God saying, teach my people so that they may learn. I already had one in there. You didn't know? That's all right. That's right. Thank you. So God is saying, teach my people so they may learn my statues, my ways, loving one another, forgiving one another. 
this is something that have to be taught because truth be, to be <coughs> can't talk. Truth be told, the enemy has came in here, and you, you all, we got a mess. We got a mess. It is about prosperity. It's about money. Some people have lost their mind. Y'all know it's true. Y'all know it's true. Doing any and everything to go viral. To... Y'all know I'm I'm telling the truth. And God is saying, come back to basics. Stop trying to be a, a star and just be my servant again. Love me again. Honor me again. Honor each other. There it is. Everybody talking about everybody. We're all called, but few is chosen. Many are called, but few is chosen. Gird that man and woman of God. Stop talking about each other. So we're talking about the areas that need to be healed. Ask God to reveal what needs to be healed. This is a five-fold ministry. We're all connected whether we like it or not. Whether you believe in a person or not. So now, what's the next step, prophetess? Hold on, you guys. What did it just fell on this computer? I tell you, it'd be crazy. Here, take this. But I do need some some paper towel. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Who? Glory, 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 glory. Let me share something else before I get off of here. Um, tomorrow. I'm going to start a journey. I didn't know I was going to release this right now. But tomorrow I'm going to start a journey. Uh, I never told anyone the full story of what happened to me last year. Because, you know, honestly, I thought, hey, it's not anybody's business, <laughs> you know. But I'm going to be very transparent. It's time I tell my story, the full story. And I'm bringing this up because... The enemy almost made me quit ministry because of that. Y'all don't understand how hard that hit. It was embarrassing. It was whatever. And God brought me back. He said, Deanna, this is your first work. The enemy always is going to be after your first work. Come on, somebody. Walk with me. Walk with me. God has put something in you, man and woman of God. That the enemy doesn't want release. The enemy doesn't want you walking in your ministry, talking in your ministry, prophesying, healing other people. That's it. What this gift is, is not just for me to act like I'm all that, or even for you for that matter. The gift inside of you is to heal your sisters and your brothers, those out there that are lost. I mean, I was coming from church just now and I saw this guy just walking. I could see it. I saw this girl too. And you could see the hurt. You could see the pain. And truth be told, most most church people, they ain't stopping. They ain't stopping. They're scared. But when you have the presence of the Holy Ghost, the power of God, you don't know if that person just need to hear, you know what? It's not over. You're going to make it. I see your pain. I also see your stuff. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody write your stuff. Because all of us have some stuff. What is that stuff? That stuff that we do that's not of God. That stuff that we think that's not of God. The stuff that we sneak and do that's not of God. You heard me. This is a crucial time right now. I'm telling you, this is a crucial time. God want us to grow. God want us to mature. But most of all, God wants us to be true to thyself. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to other people. Gird up your lines like a man and woman of God, says God. Do your first work. Do your calling. Do your mandate. And don't let anyone stop you. Don't let anything or anyone shut you up. Because the enemy is trying to shut up, especially the prophets of God. I'm not saying that if you're not a prophet, that the enemy is not trying to stop you. If you are a pure man or woman of God trying to just keep on going, trying to keep on just ministering, it has been hard for you in this hour. Because we're in the times of Daniel where he thinks to wear out the saints. It's been real hard. But God said, this is a testing time. God said, I'm testing you to see if you're going to stay strong. I'll give up. I'm testing to see if you're going to quit on me. Come on, Job. You get double for your trouble at the end. Not in the middle. Not at the beginning. But in the end, Job. Two things happens when people fall. 
Either they run to God or they run from God. And that's just what the enemy, because the enemy will hit you and make you think God is not with you. Because if he loved you, he wouldn't allow this, he wouldn't allow that. But you have to learn how to say, God, although you slay me, yet I will trust in you. God, heal me. God, deliver me. God, it hurts. God, they hurt me. God, I hurt me. Come on, somebody, you better help up in here, I'm walking. That's how you start to get healed. Tell God, you ain't got to call everybody. You ain't got to get in front of the church every Sunday. You don't have to tell everybody your business. You could be in the, in, in the secret place of your home, in the bathroom, in your room, wherever. Father God, I need you right now. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I feel so alone. They've turned their back. They've mocked me. They've laughed at me. Because truly, I'm going to leave you with this. If you are truly a child of God, Sometimes it's going to feel like you are by yourself on purpose. God is not doing that to, to act like he left you. He's trying to grow you so that you can stand. Hallelujah. Because that's what time it is. You want to know why people fall? Because they, they didn't have the strength. You see, there's the foundation you got to have. What's the foundation? Foundation is built on God. A relationship. God, I love you. I've been there with you. Good, bad, indifferent. Because the Bible says, Romans 8, 28 says, the good and the bad work together for those that love the Lord. God, I'm staying with you. Whether they leave me, whether they don't. Whether they believe me, whether they don't. Whether they like me, whether they don't. That's your foundation, your relationship with God. And if it's iffy, you iffy. You got to get that, that foundation solid. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Whether comes, what, what goes, who stays, who leaves. You got to know that you know, man of God. You got to know that you know, woman of God. And I, I don't know why I keep hearing God say, he's still going to use you. Come on, somebody, because some of you on alcohol, some of you on drugs. I'm talking about in the church. Oh, yeah. Some of you smoking. Some of you doing this. And, and hold on, you're not a bad person. You just feel that pressure. Come on, somebody, you feel that pressure because that pressure, that pressure going to do a couple of things, too. You see, the pressure is not to kill you. The pressure is to grow you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why you're going through what you're going through. And that pressure hurt, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll make your back back. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God said, I'm still with you. I'm still going to use you. I know what you're doing. But I'm still going to use you. Give me that problem. Give me that situation. Stop trying to take it on by yourself. Trust me. There it is. Right There it is right there. Do you trust him? We sing about it. We ain't trust him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. But yeah, you up worrying. God, how, 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 just how? God told me to tell you, don't worry about the how. Don't worry about the when. He said, I got this. Just trust me. He said, that's all I'm asking you to do. Trust me. So I'm not going to stay before you long. Again, the focus point was ask God to reveal what needs to be healed. You'd be surprised. Some people just snap. Some people, you know, have attitudes. I like to go beyond, beyond that. As a matter of fact, I was one of the first ones not trying to toot my horn or nothing. But when that stuff happened with the young lady, Carly, everybody laughed and talked about she mental. I was on a call. And those that was on the call can tell you this. I went back. And I said, God, what happened to that young lady? What happened? I already knew it was a man. I didn't say it because that wasn't my business to say at that time. People get hurt. And, and then the enemy comes in. Oh, what you going to do? And he'll try to get you to do something just as crazy so that you look crazier than you did when you before you was in that situation. And now everybody talking about her, making memes. Yeah, I'm about to say something that's going to blow your mind. You don't know if God did that to heal that young lady. Because she had been hiding what she'd been going through for so long. Because you know, we don't like to tell people the truth. You know that, right? Because of how we looking. But you don't know. God is he's so strategic. And he said his thoughts are above our thoughts. Everybody just acting crazy and clowning her. 
But what if this is our healing moment? Come on, somebody. I feel the power of God. What if this is a healing moment? Because sometimes the healing moment will embarrass you, make you look crazy, make people talk about you. Ask me how I know, and I'll tell you so. But while they talking, you healing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. While they talking, you healing. Talk, baby, talk. Sometimes you got to go behind that thing. See, that's what a real mature Christian do. But surface Christians, as soon as they hear something, they just go along with it. But a real Christian, they appeal that onion back and say, all right, God, show me the real deal. You know, I'm going to leave you with this. My mother used to always say something, and I used to get mad. Oh, I used to get so mad because I thought I was slick back in the day, right? I would do all kind of stuff, and, and I mean, I had some good lies, right? I thought they were good anyway. And mom used to sit back so cool, she said. And I thought she believed me. She'd be like, let me think if she believed me. Then she will say, okay, baby. Now, what's really going on? I'd be like, she know. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Somebody walk with me. Because that's how God do. We put on all this stuff. Y'all know it's true. And then God be like, what's really going on? Because until we pull back the real stuff and start addressing it, even in the church, we're going to have a mess out there because there's still a mess in here. So my prayer is that we all get it together. We all just come back to basics. Just just come bring it on back. Bring it on back. God. You are our first love, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and then everything else will be added to you. All God wants you to start there, and he'll teach you what to say and what to do. He'll send people to gird you. He'll send people to pray for you. He'll send people to hell, hold you up. Sometimes when you don't know how you're going to be held up. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Prophetess Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. Have a blessed day and I am praying for you. Woo, y'all, I ain't gonna lie. I'm about to take a journey. A lot of things have happened. Um, It's like, whoa. <laughs> but I'm gonna trust him. I'm gonna trust him. All right, you guys, have a blessed day. Blessed night. God bless.